protesters that have taken to the streets seeking justice for all black lives lost at the hands of police brutality have been met in several areas in the United States with tear gas and rubber bullets. Concern over the use of these crowd control tools are often dismissed by law enforcement as such weapons are thought to be less lethal. But are they? Here is what you need to know about rubber bullets and the deadly effects they can have on those who are injured by them. Rubber bullets fall under the category of kinetic impact projectiles that are used for crowd control purposes by law enforcement. According to a 2016 report by Physicians for Human Rights and the International Network of Civil Liberties Organizations, rubber bullets can be spherical or cylindrical and can be made of hard rubber, plastic or PVC. They can also be fired as single shots or in groups of multiple projectiles within a cartridge. Not all crowd control projectiles are made of rubber, though. San Antonio journalist Mark Dunphy shared a photo of his injuries on Twitter after being shot by a wooden projectile. According to a report published in BMJ Open in 2017, rubber bullets can cause serious injuries and even death. The study found that out of 1,984 individuals who sustained injuries from kinetic impact projectiles, 53 died and 300 were permanently disabled from the injury. 71% of the survivors had severe injuries. If an individual receives a shot from a rubber bullet in the neck, it could lead to permanent damage or a deadly injury to their airways. A shot sustained in the eye could lead to losing it, and a point-blank shot could lead to death. According to the report by Physicians for Human Rights and the International Network of Civil Liberties Organizations, rubber bullet impacts affect bones, muscles, and limbs most severely. So, Tomo Sapiens, if you're participating in any of the protests, more power to you. Just remember to be careful out there. George Floyd's killing has rocked the nation and sadly his case is far from being an exception. Back in February, another African-American man was gunned down. Ahmaud Arbery was hunted by a father-son duo. One of them had ties to law enforcement. You'd assume that when a young, innocent man is followed during a jog around a neighborhood where residents knew him and subsequently gunned down, there'd be someone behind bars immediately. Well, it took authorities three months to charge Gregory and Travis McMichaels with the murder of Ahmaud Arbery, but it's finally happened. According to a press release from the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Gregory McMichael, age 64, and Travis McMichael, age 34, were arrested on May 7th in connection with the death of Arbery. But why did it take so long? Well, according to the Baltimore Sun, Gregory McMichael is a former Glynn County police officer and, on top of that, a former investigator with the local district attorney's office. I wonder if this could have somehow affected justice procedures. Also, before recusing himself from the case, Waycross Judicial Circuit District Attorney George E. Barnhill wrote a letter to Captain Tom Jump of the Glynn County Police Department in which he explained why they didn't issue arrest warrants. In the letter, he states, at the point Arbery grabbed the shotgun under Georgia law, McMichael was allowed to use deadly force to protect himself. But was there really a reason to use deadly force? We'll let you decide. This is how the altercation allegedly went down. According to the Baltimore Sun, on February 23rd, Ahmad Arbery, 25, was running inside the Satilla Shores neighborhood in Brunswick, Georgia, when Gregory McMichael, 64, who was standing in his front yard, noticed him. Gregory believed Arbery looked like a man responsible for several break-ins in the neighborhood, so he notified his son, 34-year-old Travis McMichael. They both got into a white pickup truck to go after Arbery. They were carrying a .357 Magnum and a shotgun, respectively. The father and son then proceeded to chase Arbery, stopping their vehicle in front of the road, at which point Arbery ran around the pickup truck. Video footage believed to be shot by William Bryan, a third individual participating in the pursuit, shows Travis McMichaels holding a shotgun while having a physical altercation with Arbery. Three shots can be heard. Arbery succumbed from his wounds. Take a look at the footage prior to the deadly incident. Don't forget, District Attorney Barnhill claimed that Arbery initiated the fight. Does this look like a guy who's running around the car to get away from the person with a shotgun who's been following him? or like he's running towards him. I mean, common sense, people. Would you really run towards an armed person while you yourself are not armed? Let's not forget running back was not an option as there was a person behind literally filming this whole thing like it was open season. 
Well, the good thing is that we caught the culprits. It just took us three months of viral video and a public outcry. Hooray for the American justice system! America just continues to surprise the world in the worst way possible lately. Check out this guy yelling, all lives matter, while he is pointing a bow and arrow at protesters. Yes, the irony is not lost on us. A video of a white man aiming a bow and arrow at demonstrators has gone viral as Black Lives Matter protests spread across the world, demanding justice over the killing of George Floyd. The footage, which has been viewed millions of times on Twitter, shows a man, now identified as Brandon McCormick, getting out of his car yelling, All Lives Matter, before producing a hunting bow in the middle of the protests in Salt Lake City, Utah. In the video, a woman is heard shouting, Look at this, call yourself an American? As he readies the weapon and replies, Yes, I'm an American, all lives matter. You call yourself an American? Yes, I'm American, all lives matter! McCormick then turns away from the camera and takes aim at protesters before the woman screams, Don't you dare! Don't you dare! In a different clip showing another angle, the protesters can then be seen taking cover behind cars to get out of his line of sight. Suddenly, a group rushes McCormick, tackling him to the ground where they pummel and disarm him. According to social media users, his car was then flipped over and according to McCormick during an interview, was then set on fire. A beaten McCormick with a cut above his eye told the reporter what happened, claiming protesters attacked him after he shouted from inside his car, saying, First, I got beat up when I yelled, all lives matter, then I pulled out weapons, then I got beat up some more. McCormick claimed that two black men beat me through my open window before he got out with the bow. When the reporter urged him to see a doctor for his cut, McCormick said, I can't afford to, I'm on unemployment. According to KSL.com, McCormick also had a large knife in his possession and was taken into police custody. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.